Hi, Yuri is here, and in this video I'd like to share the process of making wooden bags uh, like this one. Um, the idea uh, to make such a bag came uh, from my um, sister as a request uh, to have a tiny, lightweight, uh, elegant bag where uh, she can carry her belongings like cell phone, uh, lipstick, compact and so on. Uh, so this uh, bag or purse or clutch, um, you name it, uh, it has two pockets inside. Um, it closes um, like this, uh, two magnets keep it closed and you can attach a strap and carry it on the shoulder. Well, let me walk you through the manufacturing steps highlighting the method how to perfectly align, and I repeat perfectly align, two sides together with the hinges. There is a little trick which will help you to align any other construction with hinges, especially if the hinges are small and you do not know exact measures or they are simply not precise. First, let's talk about materials and why I chose them. As a material for the bag itself, I decided to use plywood as it is more stable with humidity and temperatures. It makes the bag very light and rigid, and it is ok for CNC router. Also, initially, as a part of the design, I was driven by the stripes you get on the edges. There are different types of plywood which can influence the design, such as types of wood, number of layers, quality. Also, you can apply different finishes to achieve a certain look. I decided to start with basic birch plywood and play with the finishes later. Hinges have to be tiny, strong and close themselves together without gaps. It was a challenge to find those in the suitable size. For some reason, the most common types in this size are regular hinges with gaps, but I managed to find ones I envisioned. Another question is how to keep the bag closed to prevent your belongings from falling out. Um, after some uh, consideration it was decided to use uh, small magnets, which are glued in the middle of each side so that they come in contact when the bag is closed. And surprisingly you have to apply quite a bit of force to open the bag. Also, for carrying the bag on the shoulder, a strap or a chain is connected to the opposite sides. So, because of its weight, the bag rather gravitates to close itself. Inside of the bag it is nice to use some sort of padded material to prevent belongings from scratching and also soundproof it if something is moving inside. I find that velvet and felt, in spite of their differences in texture, fit very nicely here. Let's get to the manufacturing. First part, as usual, is the design in cut to d Here nothing is special, just a straightforward approach for double-sided machining. However, there are some things to consider, as the machining of the internal part of the bag leaves very little area to fix the part on the table after rotation, it is better to start the machining from outside of the bag. This uh, will ensure it is glued to the table at all stages of work. If you are interested in learning more about my method of two-sided machining, please check my other video, which I link in the description. Plywood consists of uh, thin wooden layers and it's important to remember when you choose to cut small structures in it, as the tool can tear the top layer very easily. So I suggest making a first cut with a downcut bit to prevent the top layer from excessive chipping. Another point is that there is a need to cut out a lot of material from inside to make a main compartment. And it is useful to choose a bit with a large diameter uh, to save some time during the roughing path. For my machine 10mm is the limit, so I find that it makes a lot of sense to perform an extra tool change but save time on the machining itself. You can also cut everything with 6mm but it would take simply longer. As always, it is a good idea to let the machine do most of the hard work, so I use round over bits for rounding the sharp cuts. It makes the part easier to finish later. As I mentioned, I usually prefer to machine 
the parts from both sides and for doing so I use super glue and masking tape method with dowels for alignment. Uh, check my other video for more detailed explanation. After machining is done, I finish the parts manually using 180 and 240 grit sandpaper. Then I apply some paint for coloring, or you can leave it as it is if you prefer a clear coat. Perhaps it is nice to spray a first layer as well. After that, I suggest aligning hinges with both parts. As after you apply your finish, it is not nice to work on the part again. The hinges I got are a bit not precise and the positions of the holes differ from part to part. Even if I knew the measures for a given hinge, the others would not fit the pre-drilled holes. That is another reason I didn't do it at the time of the machining. So it would be awesome if someone magically marked the holes just from inside, so that you open a bag and know exactly where to mark a drill for the screw. And I think I found that magic bit. So here is the way I discovered for myself and which works just great if you need to align hinges to any box or other parts where you need precise alignment. Again, you use super glue and masking tape. Yes, it is just so simple. So you apply masking tape uh, to the connecting surfaces of both hinges and wooden parts and glue them together in closed position. So the parts are aligned perfectly. Then, when the glue is hardened, you simply open the box and mark the holes. Yes, it, it, it is just so simple. And alignment is perfect. Then you drill the holes and you are done. Of course, it's important to mark the hinges and parts just to be able to put them back after lacquering and keep the alignment. Next step is to apply the finish to the wooden parts. As the back is intended to be used often uh, and in different conditions, I decided to use a two-component lacquer as a final layer to make the finish strong. If you go uh, this route, uh, you have to prepare the working area for spraying. Use dedicated ventilation, respirator, goggles and gloves, as safety is first. I do not have a special dust-free room for lacquering, so I had to polish the surfaces after lacquer is hardened, as you always have some dust particles on the surface. Uh, it takes a bit of time, but the results are very nice and shiny. Just uh, select the right material for the job, I started with a sandpaper of 2000 grit and finished with uh, the piano polish, uh, which is very, very fine. Next step is to manufacture the inlays for the pockets. I decided to start with velvet. The main point here was to have the velvet surfaces everywhere, outside and inside of the pocket so that it is nice and soft. Uh, it took me a while to figure out the blueprints for the fabric, but uh, here is how I managed to do it. The basic idea is to bend one piece of the fabric rather than sew several pieces together. It is easier said than done, I know, but you need pretty good sewing skills to do that, as you have to deal with multiple layers of thick fabric. But with some practice, I managed to get very, very good results, and that is exactly what makes you smile at the end. Now it's time for the final assembly. First, I glue the magnets. And to do so, I apply glue to their places, insert the magnets, and put the two sides together, using a thin plastic foil in between, so the parts can be separated easily later. Be careful and use the right poles of the magnet so that they attract each other. After epoxy is hardened, the magnets will be aligned perfectly and the back will close easily. Next is gluing the fabric pockets. I started with all-purpose glue, but it is kind of toxic, so I switched to the water-based one for gluing fabric. You simply apply it on both sides, wait until it's dry and press parts together. 
around the compartment I apply a piece which is made by bedding the fabric stripe towards the center and sewing it in the middle. I hope it makes sense. Now it's time to connect both sides together. It is quite simple to do. Just combine marked hinges with markings on the sides of the back and screw them together using dedicated tiny tapping screws. It is done. Back closes perfectly. Both halves join together. Um, if you need uh, to add a shoulder strap to the back, I would recommend fixing little hinges or loops to the sides uh, where there is an extra material for the screw. Then you can attach any type of strap or little chain and so on. So, here you have it. A little wooden bag for special occasions. As always, if you have questions regarding the build, please let me know. I will be glad to answer them. Have a nice day and bye bye.